Welcome, Welcome to, sustainable to Sustainable Sailing. Welcome to one of our progress videos. Unfortunately, while we're back in Beaumaris, we didn't get here till lunchtime, and unlike the forecast, it's now raining. Mm. Consistent drizzle. It's not windy though. No, <laughs> not windy. So we're just waiting for that uh, rain to clear up so we can do some filming on the four day. Our next job is to mark up this FR4 so that we can make some plates to go under the feet of our pulpit on the deck so that it will be a bit more level now that we've got our extra large backing plate for our bow roller but at the moment unfortunately the drizzle is passing through so we can see brighter skies coming fingers crossed it will be dry enough to film on the bow very soon and in the meantime we did a little bit of sorting of the other FR4 that we've got prepared so we've got 10 I think different backing plates for the remaining shroud for the chain plate so we're just waffling away waiting for the rain to stop so we'll just keep talking for the next 20 minutes or so and maybe by then it'll stop. Dave's just going to move the pulpit now so that we can make templates for where its feet go in the new bow layout. So Jane's just working out where we're going to put the FR4, basically going to fill that side um, to behind where the foot goes, make a cardboard template. Unfortunately, the two sides are different, so we're going to have to make two templates. And as the rain's starting again, I shall leave her to finish that in the rain. So we've got a little bit of a race before it starts to rain this afternoon. It's now 11.20, rain due at 2. But we're just about ready to finally clean and vacuum in an acetone. You can see we've got our two FR4 backing plates, or no, top plates for the back of the pulpit. And then we've got this one and this one for the forward ends of the pulpit. I want to just coat the inside of those grooves with a little bit more epoxy to make sure that the timber, you can just about see, we've sanded through, cut through to the timber there. I want to make sure that's covered. And then again, fairing epoxy on this to get that nice and smooth. There's a little bit of a repair around there that's hidden by the front of the bow roller. So just got to get this vacuumed and acetoned at the same time we've opened up all these holes so that we can put some tape on the underneath and fill them with thickened epoxy so that the new bolts go through epoxy the whole way no danger of water getting into the uh, polyester resin this one is going to be left open that's the hole for the wire for the bow line. Okay, the next update from the bow of Vida. We can see a little bit of blue sky in the distance there. So that's our time window to get this done. What I've done so far is all this has now been vacuumed and wiped clean with acetone. I've put duct tape underneath there. Eventually, before we bolt these through, we're going to epoxy on a backing plate with FR4 so that will finally make sure that there's no voids underneath this and instead of just the pulpit being uh, bolted through the deck with, uh, with bolts and washers it will have a backing plate. So that's ready on both sides. We've got the fan heater to try to get the temperature up a bit and Jane is just mixing our first lot of unthickened epoxy so we're going to paint that on everywhere that we're going to be working so that that has a chance to soak into anything uh, that's porous once that's on we'll go to straightforward colloidal thickened epoxy to actually bed 
all the things into position. So that's the main fixing and securing stronger uh, epoxy. And then we will use the micro balloons filler with the epoxy um, as we put in these little filler pieces to use up all our scraps of FR4 um, to fill that area there and allow us to sand it all smooth. So the idea is that this area all can drain out here, that there's nowhere in there where water can puddle. So it's not, uh, the, the, these little filler pieces in here are not for strength, it's just there to uh, ensure water can drain properly. Okay, so hopefully the thick and thin epoxy will be ready in a second and we can start putting it all together. Right, we got all the bolts off, so we're going to take the cleats off and try to clean up a little bit and fill it up with silicon so we won't be wet in the boat. Oh, look at that. That is not what you want on your cleat. still got those two in there, we didn't see those on the other side. Oh, weirdly, there are, you can just see, two bolts that weren't holding the cleat still in the deck. No wonder it was leaking. I'm just going to see if I can see those below. So, those two bolts that Dave is holding came out of those two holes and they don't lead to anything down below. Nobody bothered to fill them up when they changed the cleat. We assume, yeah. Hmm. Okay. Clean up, put silicon on and that'll do. So these are the backing plates from one cleat. It was the plywood and then underneath it, it the stainless steel. This is why we think plywood shouldn't be used as a backing plate. It's got damp, it's definitely starting to go soft and rotten, but you can also see how it's got all the extra holes from when it's been used for different things, which none of the holes have been sealed, so they just attract uh, moisture into the centre of the plywood. Also, um, interestingly, that's the backing plate like that for one cleat and the cleat right next to it, an identical cleat, 10 inch cleat, had no backing plate, just some quite small washers. We have got rid of the cleats here, but you notice this one for example, and it's an aluminium cleat, stainless steel bolts and they've got so corroded we haven't been able to knock them through with uh, a hammer so those are completely corroded into here and you can see there we tried to show you before 
the hot cleat itself has started to uh, disintegrate. All of these are going to be replaced but with the major special carbon fibre ones that we're going to make ourselves. Ta-da! Unique again. A quick look in the light of my head torch at where we've got to. So that forward area is now filled with thickened epoxy ready to be sanded down and then fed neatly and we have one two again so we're going to sand the thickened epoxy smooth and then fare it in neatly so that's the next step of the bow roller completed thanks for watching if you enjoyed it give us a thumbs up